Coming to you from Rancho Paco in Ocala, Florida, it's He's No Mickey Mantle with your hosts, George and Jordan. And welcome back to He's No Mickey Mantle. This is episode two of our show. Uh, I am George. This is Jordan, your host for the program. Uh, today we'll be discussing Super Bowl 57, the big game on Sunday. Um, Eagles versus the Chiefs. Big game, big quarterbacks. We'll take. Uh, we'll have our thoughts on that. We'll also discuss on the program today uh, Tom Brady and his retirement. Uh, then we'll get into a top three that we have for you guys today. And then we'll give you a hot take and call it a day. Uh, so Super Bowl... 57, Chiefs and Eagles. What do you have on that, Jordan? So, uh, I'm not too excited about this year's Super Bowl. I'm a little disappointed that the uh, Bengals didn't make it in. I was rooting for them. I thought they were the better team. Um, and I really did think that the uh, rest kind of skewed the game in the Chiefs' favor. So, I'm not a little, not too happy about that. Um, but uh, with Mahomes being a little banged up and Kelsey being a little banged up, uh, I'm gonna have to give the advantage to the Eagles. Uh, I think they got a they got a better chance. They got um, I think they just have more uh, more firepower on their side. So I'm definitely gonna give the uh, the advantage to the Eagles. So you like the Eagles for the big game? I do. Yeah, I like the Eagles also, but um, the referees in that that last game, uh, Chiefs and Bengals, eh, it was kind of weird. Uh, they did some bad, but the officiating has been bad. Throughout the year in the in the league. Yeah, but I've never seen that one play where they had to redo it because of the play clock. I've never seen that before. Uh, so I no, thought that Ma- was absurd. Mulligans in the NFL, that doesn't exist. But yeah, that, that was no so uh, That was a little bit of a rig job there, but who cares? I mean, but Mahomes did find a way. That guy will find a way to get it done. He's a very, very talented quarterback, very good quarterback. Uh, his arm, he'll find a way to do it. Kelsey played well, uh, injured. He played well also. Um, so those those guys are, are pretty tough. But I do like the Eagles in the game. Uh, for the only reason is because I thought like their defensive line and their offensive line better than, than than what the Chiefs have. I think they'll dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides uh, and they'll win the game that way. Yeah, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game for sure. Uh, two very powerful offenses. But uh, like you said, I think the, the Eagles will take this one. Well, I'm excited to see what Jalen Hurts does his first time out in the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, he's been playing well. He's getting healthier. Uh, I'm excited to see what he does and and what the the bright lights do to for him. Um, if the Chiefs lose this game, what do you think that becomes of Mahomes? That'll be two losses in three attempts. Big difference if he wins two out of three. Oh, for sure. Uh, so is that a legacy game for, for Mahomes? I definitely think it's a legacy game. I think there's a lot uh, that he has going for him here. Um, and if he if the Chiefs do have the advantage, I definitely think it's because they've been in the Super Bowl. Uh, Mahomes has been in the Super Bowl more times. Uh, the, experience the experience is experience definitely going to yeah. help that, that the Chiefs route, that's for sure. Yeah. But, uh, but I definitely do think that Mahomes has a lot going on this game. So if... Uh, for his legacy's sake, I definitely think he's going to have to step up. Any prediction on the score? Uh, I'm going to say Eagles 34, Chiefs 27. They'll win by, by a touchdown. By a touchdown. I think it's going to be a bit closer. I think it's a three-point game. Uh, I like 31-28. Hope we could get a good game like that. Hopefully it's not hopefully, too low scoring. You know, if the commercials are better than the game, then the game is really bad. Yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully, so that's, hopefully not that's not the case. Yeah. Moving on to our next topic. Uh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady's second retirement. Retires <laughs> for the second time in two years. He says from Miami Beach, he said uh, that he was retired for good this time. Do you believe him? No, I definitely believe him. I, I don't think he's going to go out there saying he retired for the second time uh, and not go through with it. So he's definitely uh, he's definitely uh, hung up the cleats. So I think it's definitely for good this time. I believe him when he says it's for good. Uh, I don't know 
see why he wouldn't retire for good this time. Uh, I think he saw that his skill has diminished. Finally, I think Father Time finally caught up. He is undefeated. Father Time is undefeated. So I think he did finally catch up to Brady. His, he, he didn't have a very good season this season. Uh, and I think he wants to go out before anything else goes uh, further bad for that. Uh, do you consider Tom Brady the GOAT? I do. I think uh, seven Super Bowls speaks for itself. So I don't think there's much to argue I mean, you could argue Joe Montana, you could ar argue, uh, I mean, there's some greats, but Brady's got to, I think Brady's got to be my number one. I reluctantly call him the GOAT. I have no problem calling him the GOAT because of those seven championships with two different teams, not one. Um, but is he the most skilled quarterback there has been? No. Uh, our boy right there. <laughs> Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl, but dude had a cannon for an arm and was super accurate. That's not Tom Brady. I mean, some people could argue that Patrick Mahomes is more athletic and more skilled than Brady, but he is. is Mahomes going to get to seven Super Bowls? Probably not. There was so there was plenty of athletes back in my day when that I believe had more talent in the position than than Tom Brady does. Uh. You had Elway, won two Super Bowls. John Elway, a uh, very good running quarterback as well as passing. Uh, so he had that added skill of, of running the ball. Um, Montana, four Super Bowls. Super quarterback, super, he's super clutch. He's definitely the uh, closest argument. I think uh, if you're going to argue go, uh, he has to be in the argument. Yeah. Um, Jim Kelly went to four Super Bowls. Didn't win, unfortunately, for him. But that man had a rocket of an arm, and he had a, a, a pretty good command of his team. Uh, so those those guys are, are there for uh, for those skill sets, and they have more skill sets than them. Other quarterbacks have had better skill sets than, than Tom Brady. Uh, quarterbacks that could run, uh, Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick. Uh, quarterbacks with better arms. Uh, Roethlisberger had a better arm than him. Um, you could even argue Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. But the thing that separates Tom from everybody else and makes him the GOAT is those seven rings. Yeah, I think those seven rings come with a clutch factor. He, he's got to be one of the most clutches athletes out there. And we've seen all time. He, he also made his receivers. Dan had Mark Clayton, Mark Duper. Um, Kelly had great receivers. John Elway had great receivers and tight ends. Uh, Montana had the greatest of all time, Jerry Rice. Tom had nobody. He played one season with Randy Moss. And not only did he make his players great, but he made Bill Belichick great. He contributed a lot to Bill. He, That's, he had a big influence on Belichick's uh, coaching career, the, for the sure. Thing, the thing with, with, with that is that he knew his offense so well that on the field, nobody could tell him what to do or, or how to do it. He knew exactly what had to be done, where people had to be, where it had to go. He made Edelman's career. He made Wes Belker's career. He made Gronk's career. He made all those guys into... The players we believe they are. Um, and that's what go goats do. Uh, so we give it to him. That, that he's the goat. I, can I be convinced that somebody else is? Give me a good argument. I can. But for now, I say he is. He is definitely the goat. Yeah, and most likely, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, we'll see another Tom Brady caliber. You know, Mahomes is, is really good. I think Mahomes right now but is right, the right active now, player that has the best shot. Right now, he only has one Super Bowl win. If he wins another one, he still has five to go. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's not that easy uh, as far as, as rings are concerned. Uh, but skill level, he definitely wasn't the most skilled. But he clutch. And sorry, Dan, you're my man still. But uh, uh, Tom Brady is the GOAT. Yep. I don't, I don't argue with that at all. Okay, now we're going to go into our top three, 
our top three of this episode. Uh, our topic is the top three most unbreakable records in sports. So we'll start with our number three, uh, and we'll work our way up to number one. So, Jordan, what is your top three, number three, uh, unbreakable record? My number three is going to be Barry Bonds' single-season home run record. Uh, I mean, we saw Judge come fairly close this past season. Um, we've had some other, you know, guys that have been there in the steroid era, but 74 homers is... That's that's untouchable. We saw we saw the toll it took on on Judge just to get to sixty one, just to get yeah. past sixty one. That last stretch there. That was last difficult. stretch was brutal for him. It was hard. Yeah, the pressure started mounting. Uh, he was getting walked a lot. He was uh, nobody wanted to give up that last home run. Yeah. Um, and what's crazy about Bonds uh, and his 73 home runs, that dude that year also broke the walk record. He walked more times than anybody in the history of the game in a single season, that same season. That's absurd. Yep. Steroid, no steroid, I don't care what it is. Barry Bonds is the greatest player I've ever seen in my lifetime. He, we were just talking GOAT. Yeah. That man's the GOAT. I don't care. Don't at me. Don't <laughs> give me a comment. Don't do anything. Barry Bonds, steroids or no steroids, is the He's ghost. not Mickey Mantle. Yeah, I think if anyone's going to come close to that record, they're going to have to hit close to 50 home runs by the All-Star break. Because when you get out of that All-Star break and you're getting close to playoff baseball, if you're a contender, it's going to be hard to hit another 30, 35 home runs. It's just not possible. I don't think it's possible. Um, when he did it, it was amazing. It was must much watch must watch TV. Yeah. Um, every at bat you had to be looking at him because it was gonna go, um, which is incredible. But that record is definitely un- unbreakable. Yeah. My number three of most unbreakable records: Ricky Henderson, one thousand four hundred and six career stolen bases. Whew. That's crazy. Yeah, in today's game where guys don't really steal that much, I that's for sure an unbreakable record. I mean, there's guys that barely even steal, like base stealers that barely even steal 40 bags in a season. Stolen so. bases have gone out in the game of baseball nowadays. Uh, maybe now with the new uh, rules of uh, shifting and stuff like that, they'll make a comeback in the game, the small ball. Hopefully that, that does uh, because I think it's a big weapon that you can do if you can steal bags. Even if it does make a comeback in the game, nobody's going to do it like Ricky. Absolutely. Uh, that dude stole 130 bases in one season. That's absurd. That's like four or five seasons for some players. Yeah. That's a career for some players of stolen bases. Now, I mean, that, that's absurd. That's never going to be broken. 100, uh, 1,406 stolen bases? No. Nah. Yeah. But Ricky was a man. He could fly. So my uh, my number two is going to be Nolan Ryan's seven no-hitters in a mm-hmm. career. And the reason being is that getting one no-hitter in your career is very difficult. And I don't think there's many active guys right now that have maybe more than two. So getting seven is complete dominance. I don't think there's ever going to be a pitcher that's going to get close. Plus, with how they control pitchers' pitch counts, that's I don't the- think that... I don't think that there's going to be guys that are going to be able to to go the length to get that many no-hitters. That's the big thing right there. They don't even... They take out... We just saw last season. They were taking guys, out guys, guys in the having no-hitters. no-hitters getting pulled in the seventh inning, in the sixth inning, and while having no-hitters. Managers, you got to stop that nonsense. That dude's throwing a no-hitter. You leave him in there until his arm falls off or until uh, uh, he gets a hit. Um... But we, we need to see those no-hitters. Uh, but seven, there's no way nobody gets seven. No, no, I mean, I, most I guys, a lot of, you know, some guys don't even get any. Some guys get one or two in their career, and that's it. Nolan Ryan, seven no-hitters. That man was a dude. Yeah, for sure. 
What's your number two? My number two is Cal Ripken Jr. 2,632 consecutive games played. Unbreakable. Again, the way the game has changed, nobody's touching that. The way managers uh, rest players and... uh, it's just a different ball game nowadays. Nobody's gonna play that many games in a row, and uh, not even if they try. I think that I think they get injured at some point with like the guys today, and they don't push through injuries and, cause, yeah. because I'm sure yeah. Cal was injured. Oh, for sure, yeah, he was. De- some, he definitely was sick at one point or, and uh, not yeah. feeling well, whatever it may be, or some nagging injury, something bothering him that he could have taken a day off, uh, but he didn't. Uh, but uh, nowadays, the the players are not built that way, and the game is not designed that way for the players. And uh, owners will never let their managers allow players to to go that long without a rest day. Not with the amount of money that's invested yeah, exactly. in the sport. It, so. There's just too much going into these athletes, and they're so they're so, quite literally million dollar so men. So, so so the changes in the sport have mandated a lot of these things uh, that that. These records that's unbreakable. The chain. I mean, that's what we're basically talking about. Yeah. Um, and it's funny. So far, we've had nothing but baseball, baseball. records. Um, but you know, we're baseball fans and at heart, and that's our our love. And baseball records are important. Yeah, I mean, I could have a I have a fifty record long list of records that. Wouldn't go unbreakable. I mean, there's so many out there. Um, but there's my number one is one that I think will for sure, for sure never be broken. And it's Bill Russell's 11 NBA titles. Bill Russell, 11 titles as a player. And that's a title that is hasn't changed with the game over time. So while it is still possible because there's guys with careers that long, it's so improbable because with the level of talent there is today and how hard it is to win seven game series, there's no way that but, anyone's ever going to win 11 championships in the NBA or in any sport thereof well, as, as a player. We just talked about the GOAT, Tom Brady. He got seven. He got more than Michael Jordan. He got seven, and it took him for, you know, he's 45. It took him like 20 years. And he got seven. Yogi Berra, our Yogi Berra, he got 10. That's pretty bad. 10. Uh, but Bill Russell, 11. 11 in like 14 seasons. In 13, 13 seasons. seasons. And then he won two as a coach. And one of those seasons, wasn't he injured? And they won eight straight. <laughs> and on the, the 12th season, he got injured, and that's why they didn't win. So that's... That guy basically... That's ridiculous. That guy basically guaranteed was going to win a championship every year. He, he owned he owned the league. <laughs> uh, Bill Russell owned the league. Uh, it was before my time. I had never watched him play because I'm not as old, that old. Uh, I'm old, but not that old. But... Um, Never seen him play. But Bill Russell dominating in 11 championships as a player? Nah. Nah, it's going to be very hard for somebody. You saw how hard it was for, for Tom Brady, who's considered one of the greatest ever. He and he only has seven. Yeah. Michael Jordan, greatest in, in the sport, only has six. LeBron James is at what, three, four? He's, LeBron's got four. He's got four. four with the Cavs, LA, and two with Miami. So he's got four. And he's already old. Yeah, never gonna get to eleven. Oh, the, the, I mean that's that's crazy. My number one also goes back to back in the day, nineteen forty one. Joe DiMaggio, the Yankee Clipper, it's fifty six consecutive games, fifty six game hit streak. That's unbreakable. Yeah, there's guys that. They get 10 game hit streaks and it's praised and it's just, and again with the guys sitting out so often. It's, yeah, but that doesn't, some, yeah. that doesn't matter. It's how games played, you know, oh, that's true. so, uh, but there's no way you're going to get 56. 
And let's look at, at his numbers with the 56. During that streak, he averaged 408 batting average. Had 91 hits. In 56, 56 games, games, 91 hits. 15 home runs. And in 56 games, 55 RBIs. <sighs> Joe D. So the guy was averaging nearly two hits a game. Joe D and was nearly a bad man. an RBI a game. Joe D was a bad man. And then the next day, when the streak gets broken, he goes 0 for 3. With a walk on his last at bat. 0 for 3. Two hard line drives that got caught. 0 for 3. Streak is over. The next day he goes out. Starts a 16 game hitting streak <laughs> after that. 72 out of 73 games that dude hit. I mean, how many That's hits? half a season. How many hits did he end with in that season? Uh, I don't know. A lot. Seven. That, that's a hit <laughs> in half the game. Half a season. 72 games is half a season. That's ridiculous. That's that's a hitter. That's a that's a record. It's a heck of a record. The Yankee Clipper Joe DiMaggio. This sick, crazy <laughs> people. But he's definitely that's definitely unbreakable. Nobody's seen fifty six in a row. Yeah, no. that's too hard. That it has to be the hardest record out of all everything we've talked about. I mean, yeah, with the pitchers these days, they throw harder. They're they're harder to to hit off of, you know, there's just, it, it's impossible. I think that's an impossible record yeah. to break. The impossible record to break in sports. 56 game history. I'd agree with that. And now we're time for the hottest take of the day. Well, we give you our hot take, our hottest take of the day today. Uh, Jordan, what is your hot take of the day? My hot take is going back to football. If Jalen Hurts wins this year's Super Bowl, there's no reason that he shouldn't be talked about as one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He should be in the argument with Mahomes, with Burrow, with Allen. He should be in that argument. Because the dude going from getting cut at Bama to being kind of like a low-key guy in the NFL in his first year, and then now he's in the Super Bowl yeah, going he, up against Mahomes. A guy that when he got in the NFL, people said, he's not a quarterback. Yep. He shouldn't be playing quarterback. If, if he wins on Sunday, he deserves a lot of respect. A lot of, I think he already should get a lot of respect. The man's a very good quarterback. Uh, has done great for that team this year. Uh, I don't think that he's one of the best yet. And even if he wins the Super Bowl, I don't think you could say that yet. Just quite yet. Uh, but definitely the man deserves respect, even if he loses the Super Bowl. Uh, what he's done this year has been nothing but remarkable. Uh, and all you all you out there that said uh, he was not a quarterback, hmm. <laughs> nonsense. That's, that's a good hot take, though. That's a, that was good. My hot take of the day. News, breaking news. Today, Kyrie Irving got traded to the Mavericks. I don't know what that's going to do for the Mavs. Uh, Not a whole lot. <laughs> now, Luca has somebody to play with. Uh, that's fine. But my hot take involves the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn, Kevin Durant. Now that Kyrie's gone, you're not making the playoffs. That's, That's my hot take of the day. Those dudes are not going to the playoffs that is without a, Kyrie. A hot, hot take because right now those guys are in like the fifth, fourth or fifth seed. So they're going to okay. have to drop a lot by the time that you the You just over. traded away Kyrie. No, I, I, and Kevin Durant is not healthy yet. I agree. I agree that they're going to struggle a lot. So they're going to fall fast until Kevin Durant comes back. And can Kevin Durant carry that team? We shall see. We'll have to see. I don't think they make the playoffs. And I also think that he's not going to compliment Luka too well with Dallas. I think they're two very similar players, and they're both guys who need the ball a lot. And 
honestly, with Kyrie's history, I don't think he's a great guy in the clubhouse. And I just think that he's not going to be... He could prove me wrong, but I don't think he's going to be a great addition. Do you Dallas. think the Mavs extend him? What is he? So he's on a one year right now? Well, yeah. He's a, to the end of the he year. He has to be extended uh, to stay with the team because uh, he'll be a free agent. We'll see. We'll see how he behaves uh, with the players and uh, with the coaches, but I don't think he's going to be too much of a help there in Dallas. You think LeBron's big man? That he can go, that he Le- can get him. <laughs> LeBron <laughs> tweeted out. Uh, oh, I didn't see. Tweeted out um, saying, "I guess it was me." So he, he I guess he's kind of sad that uh, Kyrie didn't want to reunite with him in L.A. But no, he did. He did. He had a pity party. I wouldn't say a pity party, but I, I think he's a little upset. So, wow. I did not see that. But I don't think Kyrie going to LA was gonna get that team out of the ten seed anyway, so but Yeah, that's two hot takes for you. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Close out the show here, Jordan. Alright, so in the next couple weeks we're gonna be getting out our MLB uh preseason preview. And, and some college. And some college baseball. We're gonna be talking uh our early predictions, also uh, analyzing the Yankees' offseason moves and, uh, and all that good stuff. So We're getting to my favorite time of year. Baseball's upon us. We will get heavy into baseball after the Super Bowl is over uh, and before the NBA playoffs start. Uh, we'll go heavy baseball. We'll talk college. We'll talk pros. We'll talk the World Baseball Classic. Excited for that. Uh, so keep tuning in. Uh, Hit subscribe, uh, comment, contact us. Uh, We look forward to hearing from you. Take care, y'all. I'll see you next time.